door just opened up. Enemy to the left hand side. Here we are crouch walking across. We need to move and get to shoot the enemy in the back. Instead, we're just frozen up right now. Don't look down the stairs. He's definitely outside. I was mistaken. What is going on, Wolfpack Savage here? In today's video, we're going to be bringing esports tournament commentary to a random solo gameplay. Now, I usually hate spectating random solos because it's usually really boring, but I feel like the type of shit we usually spectate would fit perfectly into this series. But before we get into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, join the Wolfpack today. Also, let's get this video to 2,000 likes. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, already jumping right into the action, spectating my dude, Wellman. Wellman is a former Ultra player. Here he is utilizing one of the most broken ground loot weapons there is to blow this poor SOB to kingdom come. Sorry, rest in peace, Vargas. Rest in peace, brother. Let's see how he operates. Normally, he's a very high intensity player, dropping 20 and 30s almost on the regular. Very rarely does this man drop less than a double digit kill game. I'm sure he thinks that I'm the guy he just killed. I mean, this is the, you can just see the cockiness emanating off this man's body. Look at this, just radiating. And you know what? Don't mistake cockiness with a bad thing, it's just having extra confidence. So let's see how, let's see how good Wellman really is. All right, we have fights going on right now to his right-hand side over to the south. Let's see if he ends up engaging. He does not. He's sitting on $11,000, and still he's here looting. Throws down a random Betty. Now we should probably go get our loadout, but again, I'm not going to question this guy. He's way better than I've ever dreamed to be. He's been in many tournaments. Never won a tournament, but he's come damn near close. Again, we, we really have everything we need. We have plates. We have money. We have a trophy. We have thermite. Like, what else could we possibly want? Maybe he's sitting here baiting people, looking out in the distance with a close range weapon was really questionable. So realizing his mistake, swapping over to the long range, spotting the target, getting the ping on him. Let's see if he ends up pushing the enemy. He probably should push. Instead, we're just gonna watch the enemy run away. We're gonna mount, try to take some last minute shots. Big mistake with this recoil. However, he is such an accurate player. He's able to break his armor. But now we force ourselves in a 1v1, kind of the stagnant, let me hide behind cover bullshit. Let's see if you can actually get the kill. You can't forget the other guys that were to his right hand side as well. That may end up coming to third party us. Still completely oblivious to the fact that we need to get our loadout and the loadout station being right behind us or left hand side. We're just gonna go ahead and full balls the wall, send this mother. We enemy in the warehouse, left hand side. We're sitting out in the middle with no cover. The enemy's got plenty of cover. We need to make way to the ATC. We do so. And now we have a second enemy now in the trailer next to us. We need to take advantage of this third party situation. He's outside, inside. They got one on the inside. There's one. They got the other one on the outside, the left-hand side of the warehouse right now. Living in a scope. As soon as we peek, and this is again why you don't live in your scope. The moment we peek, we can't see him, but he sees our shoulder and he takes us out. Let's see if he falls for the same mistake. Now, again, former Ultra member Wellman, he's been around the corner, man. He, it's been a minute since he's played. He's taken a few months off and he's coming in with this new update. So he's trying to get a good balance again, but again, he needs to be aware of the fact that he's completely vulnerable from 360 degrees. And again, sitting here using the APC as cover. I think I called it the ATC earlier. It's actually an APC, I apologize. And here we are, turn our back to the enemy getting blown, but luckily not broken completely. Again, questionable exposing our entire body on top of the crate, but finally, Wellman saying, Shit. Bro, I got $13,000. Maybe I should get my load out. So here we are now, slide canceling our way to a hopeful victory. But not before looting the crate. There we go. I knew that was going to happen. Now, again, time is of the essence, right? We've we've pissed off an enemy over there by the hangers. But there's no telling who's around us. We have Corey building to our left-hand side. We have more hangers right in front of us. Oh, weird. So as much noise we're making, you want to get your load out as fast as possible. Because if you get pushed and if you get killed because you're wasting time looting bolts shit crazy didn't need you're gonna be really mad so let's see oh wellman's about to get shit on the enemy behind him using the height on top of the fence and we have no idea again going back to the point where he really should have just came in there bought his loadout and gotten the hell out the more noise you guys are making around you the greater chance you have to get pushed from other enemies you have no idea we're even there but raymond's saying thank you for the money wellman this is a, there's a reason why you're a former ultra player hence the former part, I'm gonna take this shit after I shit on you, get my load out and win this game. Wellman had three kills, now Raymond rocking three as well. We've got a decent build set up. I really love to see the Carnity 8 plays. This is getting me a little excited now, looking at the UAV, we have an enemy over here by the flag, which we can chase down. 
we have two right there that are engaged in the fight right now um oh oh we got two more popping up that are actually spread apart and one of them may be floating in the air that could be wellman coming back for some vengeance only time will tell again now we've got four enemies popping up this is definitely the right you want to go screw the guys up to the north don't really know why again we're looting right now now raymond is an up-and-coming player he is not with any team never been affiliated with a team he has hopes to be part of 100 thieves and here we are using the heartbeat sensor to scan but i believe if i'm not mistaken that he's actually under uh... i'm gonna be honest i don't know where he is either for a second, it looked like it could have been in the tunnel, but it's a little bit more to the right. So he's probably in the building on the rooftop. And lo and behold, there he is. Questionable shots fired with car 98. What even lined up the enemy? Now, right now, we're struggling at medium and long range combat. Raymond needs to go ahead and push that building with the cover that he has and close the gap to get some better shots off. A little bit of waste of UAV, in my opinion. We already know where the enemy is at. There's no reason to really call it in right now. And I want you guys to notice how the enemy is playing Raymond right now. He's moving from rooftop to window, and now he's actually pushing us, closing the gap, just like we should have done. Going back and forth, using that freaking water crate to his advantage. Us jumping on top, somehow getting the kill. Raymond coming in clutch out of nowhere. I thought for sure he was going to absolutely get shot on that fight. But somehow, the spray and pray from this beautiful weapon was able to deliver the kill. Wow. Wow, as far as the enemy's concerned, again, he had the better idea. Notice how when he was sitting in that building, he didn't just hold one window. He went from one window, shot at us, to another window, shot at us, to the rooftop, shot at us, and then back to the window, shot at us. And when he knew we were vulnerable, he pushed out. Again, very surprised and very unfortunate that he actually lost the gunfight. I thought for sure he was going to win, um, but great play by Raymond, I guess. I wouldn't really say great play, just... He got very lucky with the spray and pray. And here we are again in a very familiar position that Wellman was just in. Let's see if Raymond plays this better or worse. Getting shot at from the enemy in the hangar right now. This could be Wellman coming back for victory. Not really sure right now. We're sitting between it. We need to use the Car 98 to go ahead and get this nice headshot. There it is, the armor break. Now, th again, this is where we want to close the gap. He's going to be plating his armor. We have sticky grenades we could throw over there to try to Kobe and push the enemy. All we're doing right now is giving the enemy time to plate up when we had more plates than he did. But he's confident it's Car 98 shots. Car 98 built absolutely like a tank, bro. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, sorry, guys. Those of you who are curious about his loadout, there you go. For some reason, bailing out of the fight. Very surprised on that. Again, I think we were winning that fight. Granted, the enemy had better cover. But I I would have felt more confident with that with engaging this fight. Actually, I stand corrected. It looks like he may be closing the gap on the outside of the fence. Or not. Little confused right now by Raymond's Raymond's decision making. He seems a little indecisive. This is one of the things Raymond has told us that he wants to work on in his tournaments is that he wants to be more decisive. He wants to make a decision and go with it instead of what you're seeing here, which is second guessing, third guessing, and just kind of going back and forth. Again, I didn't mind the fact that he was going around the fence if he closed the gap, but for some reason we just bail out. Now he's panic buying a UAV, right? There was no reason to leave a fight to panic buy a UAV. You definitely want to buy UAVs, but don't bail from a fight that you could possibly win and that you are winning to do so. Now, here we are sitting here baiting the loadout. I'm sorry, the buy station. Right now, these two vehicles, they're playing tag right now. So you want to go ahead and get the car 98 and get some headshots. These are very easy opportunity to get some headshots, but instead we're just waiting for nothing. Like look at, look at the mini map right now. They're both frozen up and so are we. Why? Easy headshot, bro. The moment they hit each other and they collide, whew, snipe them. Now here's a perfect position, a third party coming up behind him using the beautiful, oh my God, can we actually hit it? Vehicle gets destroyed, enemy still alive, however. Now another one pushing us again. We need to focus on the guy we were originally fighting. He's gonna be able to survive that and he shouldn't because his armor plates are broken. Also again with solo gameplay, and this is no surprise to anybody, you just have a lot of vehicles driving in circles trying to ram each other for some, whatever reason. Again, I want you guys to notice again, we've literally wasted about three UAVs right now. Granted, this isn't a bad time to use it, but if we're going to call in the UAV, we might as well get a kill from it. Enemy jumping out of the vehicle, left-hand side. We do not notice that at all. Finally realizing it, and we're going to go sit. Oh, please don't go down there, brother. You know better than this, Raymond. I've seen you play in tournaments. You know better than that. All right, we have another guy coming in on us right now. Nope, floating away to fire station. Now, the enemy is literally sitting in the trailer next to us. He may go back to his vehicle. He may come to the buy station. We're hoping for the latter. He gets in the vehicle and now he drives away. So again, I want you guys to notice right now, Raymond 
you know, he's dropped 20 and 30 kill games. He's not a terrible player. This just happens to be a very bad match where he's just sitting up doing nothing. We've had three vehicles pull up. We've had four enemies in total, and we've let every one of them live while using two UAVs to identify the location. Another situation, we got the armor broken. Broken. We need to throw the sticky right over that wall and maybe finish them off. But fortunately for us, we were able to peek the corner. The enemy, for some reason, was also peeking the corner, and we were able to take them out. Now, in the enemy situation, while his armor plates were broken, there was no reason for him to sit there and challenge us by leaving that cover. He should have played it up and then left the cover to peek us. Now, again, when interviewing Raymond the other day, we talked about, you know, things like decision making. That was definitely a huge aspect he wanted to work on, but also moving around. He wants to increase his tempo. And I can see him right now falling back into the same play style he usually runs in tournaments where he just sits up, panics a little bit, and he tries to take some long range fights. Again, even if we do knock an enemy, most enemies and solos will have self res. What is this guy doing? Here we go right now. Enemy landing on us right now at Southeast 124. The easy beams. Easy beams, my boy coming back for his loop, but unfortunately for him, we're sitting here waiting for him. Again, not against the play that Raymond did, baiting the enemy's bodies. You'll probably have one more come back should they win their gulag because there are a lot of bodies here. But I definitely want to see him speed up his tempo because he did say he wanted to do that. We've now been here for about five minutes, sitting on $8,300, buy UAV, call it in, buy another UAV, and roll out is what I'm hoping I see from him. We just get in the same pattern of clearing the entire perimeter, and that's kind of it. Uh, looks like there's a shadow above us and possibly another enemy. Never mind. Nothing on UAV. Savage, why are you using the circle map? I just got a new computer. Forgot to change the circle map. So please forgive me. I know someone in the comment section is going to slay me. Brand new computer. I haven't, I haven't messed with it. I'm sorry. Anyway, UAV up. No one's here. But still Raymond finds himself back in the same position he was in in the last six tournaments. He needs to move out, grabs the bounty, and now we are gone on foot, which is unfortunate. I just don't see this going well. We're going to have to push a few compounds and a few buildings um, that I don't really like to push on foot. Still falling into the loot, the loot meta. Not really sure exactly why. We've wasted probably $20,000 worth of UAVs. I mean, at the same time, with the amount of UAVs he's wasting, I guess I couldn't be mad at the fact that he needs more money. I will give him credit though, Raymond, despite the lack of decision-making, despite him freezing up, this man is calling in as many UAVs as possible. So he definitely has a little bit of sense as to what to do when it comes to buying UAVs. And here, here's back to the decision-making, right? He should have just made one straight path around going to the hill. Instead, we're sitting here completely vulnerable, going back and forth and finally just sitting up, scanning TV station. All right, again, talking with Raymond, he said he wanted to increase, again, we talked about this already, but he wanted to increase his decision-making, but also speed up the tempo of his gameplay. And this is one of the things he lacks. He really has a hard time and he struggles with going from person to person and finding consistent kills. The man's a decent shot, but he, he very much lacks in the sense of finding other enemies to f*** on. Sitting here hard in our scope, with the enemies able to see our glint and able to get a few shots off, but Raymond delivering a nice headshot to Baker. Unfortunately, of course, with self reses, this is going to be one of the common things that we're going to have to deal with. Raymond waking up this morning, I said, if you win this tournament, what do you want to do? What is the first thing you're going to do? And Raymond looked me square in the face. And I swear to you, he said, Savage. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Sneak Energy. I'm gonna get me every flavor on the menu and definitely, definitely use code SAVAGE. All right, and again, Raymond is in a tournament against some real legit legends. A lot of phase members jumped in this one, a lot of Optic members, a lot of 100 Thieves, a lot of Ultra. Again, there are very few free agents in this tournament, but we need to go ahead and make a name for ourselves. We only have six kills and 14 enemies left. Does not look like we'll be taking the cake. Homeboy jumping up there like it's Fortnite. Are we able? to get the kill on the guy going for the execution. And there we are able to deliver a beautiful headshot to Ravish. And guys, if you don't remember Ravish, Ravish was actually one of the enemies that we ran into at the beginning of the game. So he definitely came back and tried to make a name for himself by switching his entire position instead of coming back for a vengeance kill. Good shit by Ravish. Unfortunate for him to die though. Again, he was one of the highest prospects. I think we had them all in our top three. Um, Raymond, unfortunately, did not make top three. I think he's in the top 15, but uh, Raymond has a chance to prove himself. He could possibly, could possibly drop eh, maybe a 15 kill game. I doubt he's going to get 20 again. This is where the tempo comes into play. He could get 20 if he kills everyone else on the map, but with him sitting on a rooftop like this, I don't think any of us see this happening. 
Now, a lot of tournaments, you'll see people do this. And one good thing that they'll do is they'll run restock or their teammates will run restock and they'll just restock and claim more of these staircases, which is a great tactic if you're holding the position. Now, I'm not telling you guys to camp, but should you have a nice building with, with a great gatekeeping area or should this be an end circle? Having a teammate with restock on is a great, great thing to do. We have an enemy under us somewhere. We're, we're, we're turning too fast, finally able to find them. And we're going to crouch walk our asses to victory. He thinks he's above us, but he is definitely below us. I heard the door open. He's going to the other side of the building, it looks like. When you go ahead and you don't have to hug the door. See, even his heart beating is very indecisive. He starts scanning one way, then he turns around, finally just committing to one side. We should probably use an AC vent or something as cover. Sitting here out in the open like this, if this guy slide cancels through the doorway, looks. I mean, he has a huge chance to shit on us just like just like we do. Could even sit on top of on top of the door, but instead we're yeah, I'm not sure exactly what this dude's doing. I'm going to be honest. Now we have two enemies on us. One with ghost. The guy pulling up the vehicle, I'm assuming, has the ghost. Door just opened up. Enemy to the left-hand side. Here we are, crouch walking across. We need to move and get to shoot the enemy in the back. Instead, we're just frozen up right now. Don't look down the stairs. He's definitely outside. I was mistaken. And weird, he killed, he killed a dude named Savage. Weird. I thought for sure he opened the door and bust out the, out the side. I swear I heard some footsteps, but clearly I would have died. I would have been killed. Um, great read by Raymond, able to identify the fact that he was frozen up in the building and Savage goes down without a trace. Weird. Weird. Enemy following us right now. We need to go ahead and look around. Unfortunately, we heard him. We just kind of looked right up in the air instead of actually doing a 360 scan real quick. Relying on the heartbeat a little too much. This is an option where you need to use your eyeballs when you have an enemy coming in. And here we have another heartbeat sensor. And I want you guys to notice too, Raymond, you know, he's got a lot to work on as a player, especially in the competitive scene. But when he gets a heartbeat blip, you see his entire mindset change, right? He becomes this confident player. He starts bee hopping. He gets all excited and just smiling like it's Christmas morning. And then he's able to get a kill. If people would just practice using their eyeballs, they can get that same gas and that same energy just from seeing the target. It's the weirdest shit. Here we are again, though. This is unfortunate. I, I hate to see this. So basically, players will rely on the heartbeat too much. And uh, when it works, when it ends up working out, they just keep doing that, right? The heartbeat is a great tool, and there is a time and a place for it. You don't want to always just rely on it, because if you do, you're going to get caught up, and you're going to be very surprised when someone with ghosts comes up and pushes you, and you're sitting here screaming, how the hell did I not see him on my heartbeat sensor, even though we all know how. And again, going back to the, the Claymore and restock option, again, this is not a spot I would want to sit on. However, should I see this circle, this is definitely the building you want to get to. So we're going to see a lot of enemies pushing Raymond here. Actually, there's only seven enemies left. We should see at least one enemy push this building because it is the best vantage point as of right now. We could see everything except for the loadout, anything down the bottom of the hill. And again, having restock with some Claymores would be a great option to prevent people from pushing you without you knowing. Even though the Claymore may not get the kill, it will at least explode and then you'll be able to know, okay, he's coming up the staircase, get ready. Guy coming in again right here, jumping off. I think, I didn't really see where he came from. It could have been the gulag, but I highly doubt it because it's closed. I don't know where he jumped from. Maybe the tower, maybe the ridge. Show him getting down though and continue. All right, unable to get the execution, but the enemy still is down. There's another enemy sitting on bank as well. Don't know what we're doing right now. It definitely closed the door. There you go. Don't let the AC out, bro. That's a rude thing to do. And going back to the heartbeat sensor. So we're at in game right now. Most players should have ghost on. Most, right? Some decide not to run it. Some um, come back from the gulag and they haven't gotten their ghost class yet. All right, now we're just holding this rooftop right now. You can damn well guarantee at least half of the enemies left, three of them, right? Um, should have ghost on. So we need to be careful sitting on this ledge and kind of looking around. We're very vulnerable to headshots. Not really sure exactly what the play here is. Now I'm not against it, but it's a huge risk for a very small reward. He's gonna, I assume he's gonna go ahead and get an advanced UAV in the air, is my assumption. We shall see. There's one ping, two pings. It's actually not a bad reward. Um, he does not commit to the advance while he's down there, but unfortunately, he does give up his power position and then he goes down like that. We're able to get the self res. The enemy's not pushing us right now. Very questionable on the enemy. Now push us. We need to fall back over the wall and get out of this position and completely relocate, but unfortunately, we're frozen up. This is a position where you could use the airstrike. I don't think I would. I would just make a run for it and get my building back. But do not let this enemy take your high ground. 
And for some reason, he's not. He's just frozen up right now. Sitting in the doorway, coming up with dead silence behind the enemy. Holy shit! Oh my god, there's two of them in there! Spraying and praying, trying to suppress the enemy. I'm not against that at all. You definitely want to you definitely want to do that because I damn well guarantee you that somebody was thinking about pushing. Now, there is some more plates at the top of the staircase. But what are the odds that two enemies are literally camping in two rooms right next to each other and no one shot a single bullet at each other? Weird, weird. All right, go up to the staircase. Your left-hand side, you should have some plates right here. Here it is. Boom, look at this. Shit. Beautiful and armor box clutch right here. Now, there may be somebody on the rooftop as well, which is why the other two enemies down there did not push. So we need to be careful how we push out of here. Fortunately, I don't see anybody. That doesn't always mean anything. Picking up one heartbeat under us. He may be coming up as well. As we were going up the staircase, we did hear gunshots over to the southwest, and the player numbers went down. So, I would imagine that someone died. And again, because this is such a good vantage point, you want to have the high ground, because the circle right now is going to the north. Great read by the enemy. Mr. Savage coming back out and instantly locking on us, snapping on us, and blowing us away. Great read by Savage, anticipating the fact that we're holding the angle by the AC vent. And now we're watching the man, the myth, the legend, Savage himself with 11 kills in a solo gameplay. And again, going back to the circle, look at this, look at this. Look, we're, look, look at this. We have, we have a beautiful vantage point. We have one enemy knocked. We have the other one by the birth that we just saw him get in for whatever reason. We need to be careful though, because homeboy to our right hand. Now, I'm going to be honest. Everything happened so fast, but I don't, I didn't see that guy in the bush. Did y'all? The, the first snipe shot was a little questionable, but I was like, you know what? Maybe he's nutty. The second one, eh. I, again, I, I'm going to call bullshit, but let me know in the comment section below if you think it's bullshit or not. It happened so fast, I don't really know. And no, this is not my gameplay. I'm not a cheating. But anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, leave a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel today. But until next time, you have a good one, and good luck in Warzone.